up a couple of rides, it's the top of their order. And he and Connor went nine straight, and that's huge. They can't turn over their lineup that way. Yeah, it was it was a, and it's exactly what we just talked about. And, and neither one of them had their best stuff. They, mm -hmm. They've thrown several days uh, this week. Neither one had their best stuff, but they executed. And, and that's all we talked to them about. Is, we don't need your best stuff. Your stuff's good enough. We need you to execute so that we can pitch the combinations, that we can shift the defense and put guys in a good position to support you. And just be tough enough to go out there and, and, and know and have the confidence that I don't need my A-plus stuff. I need to compete and execute pitches and put them away. And they did that, and I was really, really proud of them. They were both terrific. I know Paulie had one tough inning, but we were talking about if there's any guy in the staff that's not going to be is going to be imperturbable after a two-hour rain delay, it's him. And that's that's exactly right. And, and that's that's why it's it's so hard you know, to look at it tomorrow. There'll be weather out of nowhere, like there was today out of nowhere. I'll have to play a doubleheader, but it, it's it's hard to sweep doubleheaders. And, and with, with no weather behind it, we, we did feel like having Paulie, he's so tough, he's, he's so unflappable to your point. He's, uh, he's just so focused that we felt like, and he's big and strong and, and he's, he's physically capable of doing it, that it was, it was in our best interest to go out there and do that. And Paulie did a great job. And you know, they, they did a good job, guys, with the run home run on a, on a changeup that cut across the plate. And, that's not really his game. We had the defense up and down, and, and, and he got one. They got here by a few feet. So, you know, it, he did a really good job. He competed his butt off and, and gave us a chance, you know, after on a short week, after going two extra inning games back to back, he gave us a chance to, to save our pen a little bit. And then obviously with, with Connor and, and with, uh, with Sloan, did, did the same thing and kind of saved us there. I thought a big hit for you guys after they went up to Scotty Bradley leading off the next inning with a double. Wasn't that, that huge? That was the first of four extra yeah. base hits in that. Exa absolutely. And, and I, we just, again, we just talked to, to Scotty about that. Um, you know, every day is a new opportunity. It really is. And, and so we talked about it. Tuesday wasn't Scotty's day. Today is a new day. Let's go out and let's be the best that we can today. And he had a, he had a terrific day. That, that pick he had was a really tricky one. It's a long in between. It's not short and it's not long. It's that goofy one that a lot of guys don't handle. Handled that one. Then he comes back and doubles and later has a long at bat and walks in a big situation. He was really good. I was I was really proud of of him. Just the way that he went about his business today. It was, you're right. That that big inning and he let it off there. Another guy you look at that I, I told Matt Gorski after the game. It, it was probably the, the, the best game I've ever seen him play. It truly was, and he got one hit. Now, it was a huge one, but he was terrific. He's made some nice adjustments in his swing, as you guys can probably tell. It just goes to work, and, and it is nice to be home, to be able to work in the cages again. Made a, a couple nice adjustments and hammered balls all night, and then that catch he made in the left center. <laughs> yeah. Was that not absolutely – was anyone else like jaw – I mean, <laughs> I, I coach a guy every day, and I work with outfitters every day. I've coached Gold Glovers. And that was one of the most incredible special plays I've ever seen, especially knowing it's a one-two count. I have Matt over and down in the opposite field gap. And just the intensity and the competitiveness and the killer instinct to go into the wall and make that catch is like reckless abandon. And, and you only do those things if you, if you truly care about your teammates. You only do those things if you are completely locked in and so focused and committed to, to doing that for your teammates. Because if not, it's easy to pull up and no one thinks twice about it. No one says, hey, man, I, I wish you could have, I think you could have caught that. No one thinks you could you can catch that ball. And, and that's, the, that's the attitude that, that, that will make us or not. That's the attitude that will make this program special or not. And you, we have to have it. We have to have it every day in every pitch of every game. And Matt exemplified that tonight in everything that he did. And he got one hit, and that was a huge hit. Um, but you know, it's, 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 if, you're, if we're so focused on the performance, we get what what get what's get what gets lost is how we get to a performance, and 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 you know I'm smacking Matt on the butts. I'm like the best game I've ever seen you play, and uh, you continue to come out and compete and do those things. It's just not about the performance. It's about the process to get there. I know you can't change how you call the game, how the guys play the game, but obviously Nebraska playing Michigan, a huge series going on while you're playing Rutgers here in the Big Ten yeah. Championship on the line. How does that? That's got to play into your mind somehow after the game when you like to Nebraska sure. tonight. Yeah, no, we. I, I mean, I'm certainly I check it after the game. I'm, I'm human. We're, we're all human. Um, <clears throat> you're you're going to think I'm taking taking a cop out, but I I truly mean this, and I've done these after every game. Like my goal is for our guys to to be the most competitive, the hardest playing, the most focused team in the country every time that we play, and so that when you do have a game like tonight, right, where you are fighting for a regular season championship. You're not trying to turn the switch on and say, like, today we have to win. 
or today we have to. If we have to do something, we add so much pressure to ourselves. That's why I get frustrated in, and vocalize it probably more than I should sometimes to, to everybody. But that's why I get frustrated when we, when we don't, when we, when we take a couple of things off or take a day off or we don't show up because it's not just that day. It's not just the midweek game that you didn't play well in or didn't compete well in. It's the, it's the lasting effect of, of then trying to turn it back on it is an impossible thing to do, especially in such a failure-based sport. It's not football where you're just bigger and stronger and you hand the ball off to your tail back out of the eye and he just runs it down people's throat. It's not like that. You're, you're looking at Matt Gorski has one of his best games of his career and gets one hit. It's just a silly game. I don't know why any of us decided to be a part of it, but we did. <laughs> And so you just can't turn it on and off in this game. And so you're right, 100%. I, I checked the score before I walked out here. Um, but you, we do try so hard to get the guys to play how they should so that when you get to the end of the season, again, coming from mid-major baseball, that helps me so much. Because you're, you're, you're just so used, you're so hardened to having to win in the last month. Or you just go home. And so the ability to prepare a team to do those things, you, the mindset you have to have, it started – six months ago, nine months ago. It was every Tuesday game. It was every game in the first month. You're trying to build their mindset to be able to, to accomplish and achieve in the last month. And regardless what happens in Lincoln, you guys have to bring it the next two days, regardless. Regardless, regardless. Oh, absolutely. You're, 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 playing, you're playing for the, uh, the Big Ten tournament seating. You're playing for the NCAA tournament. There is, there is nothing guaranteed. The only thing that we are guaranteed is four more games. Unless we get rained out, right? You're gonna get you're guaranteed four more games. You have to go, and and, and, and you have to, to, to pour it out and all those things. And um, I, I really am as frustrated as I get sometimes. I'm very proud of this team, how far we've come from being under 500 in the first month, overcoming some of the injuries, the growth of the young guys. Uh, some days where we kind of stub our toe and do some goofy things to respond back. I am very proud of what we've done, regardless of what happens this weekend. And and I I, I mean that. Is the Ball State game that you won at like 18 to four, but you really made a point that you cannot expect to score that many runs in right. a game because those four runs were probably all unearned. I think I remember. And the Ball, Ball State and the, had, yeah, there was a little bit of slot. Yes. Yeah. 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 You, you, you're exactly, you're exactly right. Like, we we thumped some balls tonight, and they landed for hits and the home run. We also had some really hard outs, and and. It, to, to, to off topic, but a little bit to this point, I was frustrated with a couple of our opportunities to, to play. I was glad we've worked on trying to bunt a little bit more in situations, and you saw some guys do that, try to do that a little bit more. Um, but we had, you know, we had a guy on second base and, and, and nobody out, and we get a backdoor little loopy breaking ball in a 2 1 count, and we don't advance the runner. We take it. That has to, can't happen. We had a game plan today to, to take his off speed pitch until we got a strike, at least the first time through. We come up with a guy on first and second, nobody out. We swing at a first pitch, off-speed pitch, we get Jay and Pop out to the first baseman. Those are the little things that, that disallow your inning from, from ballooning into a crooked number. And those are the little things that when I get frustrated, that's what I'm talking about, is it is so hard to walk up and, and, and get to account and have the conditions, the wind's blowing a little bit, not in or out, whatever, and to square it up and hit a, it's so hard to hit a home run. It's so hard to hit an extra base hit, especially when every team we play throws 60% off speed and puts three guys on the, on the warning track every game. So when you have opportunities to advance the runner or to follow an approach, it's, it's, it's designed to put you in the optimal position to get a pitch that you can handle or in the advance the runner situation to allow us to then do what Sam Curl did earlier in the game which is work along a bat, tap a ball to the second baseman, and we score a run. We have to be more multifaceted and multidimensional, and we're working every day to do those things. But to your point exactly, you just can't expect to go out and score those runs. On a, on a Friday night, on a Tuesday night, it, do, it doesn't matter. It's just baseball is hard. Scoring runs is hard. But it's really hard when you give away three or four or five outs and, and give me situations. Just give me, a, just give me production you have to be able to, to uh, uh, produce. It looked like Sounds Lord, like something uh, just happened in there. Look, I think Nebraska just yeah, Nebraska out. just won. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, but we're not paying attention. We're not, we're not paying attention. No, no, no. What a, what a cop out, man. What a cop out. <laughs> <laughs> It looked like Matty Lloyd enjoyed that home run tonight too, yeah. because it was a meaningful home run. Right. It, it, you're yeah. exactly right. And and you watch Matt. Again, it's hard to be the dude. It's hard to be in the middle of the lineup and be the guy and have everybody count on you and get pitched the best. And he hasn't been great the last few days. Yeah. We've, you can tell when we go on the road when we can't when we didn't get to practice as much. I get a little long, a little bit uphill, and 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 I, I mean I hog up in the middle of the bat. I'm like, what did I say? I said get I said get downhill. I said get on time and get downhill. And we work so much together. He's like, 
okay. And you see the very next one, he fouls straight back. He's getting downhill again, and I'm like, oh gosh, he looks, he looks like it. And then he does it, and then he, he stays downhill to it. And again, he fouled, he's fouled a bunch of balls straight back, mm -hmm. and he just is able to clip that one. But you know, he, 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 again, he, he doesn't allow previous situations to phase him, and he's, and he's so coachable, and he's so open to learn, and he's so competitive. It's like I can fix it right now, and I have to fix it right now. And that's really nice when you can coach a guy, not only in the middle of a game, but in the middle of an at bat. You know, can are you coachable? When the bullets are flying, are you coachable when you're in the trenches and, and you know it's an intense moment? And that's why he just he responds, right? We're, we're, you're all it's always going to be cyclical. You're going to ebb and you're flow, and you're going to you're going to you're going to struggle a little bit, and then can you get back to it? And can you just not ride the waves every day? And, and can you be able to to make an adjustments in the moment? Are you that emotionally mature? And I want to say this too. How about how about Cole Barr and Elijah Dunham's growth? How about those guys, their maturity? Cole Barr walks twice tonight, has long at-bats, works from two strikes back to a walk. Eli Dunham, you know, four, we, hits. four hits. And what I was most impressed with, you know, we, we have a little Louisville game with the guy on first base, and the, he gets a 2-0 fastball, and he peels off and hits a ball down the line foul and pulls off of it. And he's just excited, and, and he wants to hit a home run. He wants to win the game. Instead of doing what he did tonight in that 3-1 count when he doubles off the right center field wall, and he just lets the barrel cross his face and stays through it. And, and, and that's, again, that's growth, that's maturity. Cole Barr, we're working so much on seeing spin better for him and being you know, better the big part of the field. And you look at what he did tonight. And, and those, that's the incremental growth that, that we covet and that we cherish and, and that we, we, we were the foundation of the program. But those guys were really good t tonight too. Justin Walker's a guy that's been swinging it better recently. His average up, he's making more hard contact. Yeah. Well, what's changed for him recently? He had that two RBI dub, yeah. double tonight. Justin, um, Justin's a, a great kid. Justin's a great kid, and he's incredibly talented, as everyone sees. But but Justin has made a real commitment to being a baseball player, right? And I, I mean that in a positive way. We all have that moment in, in our life when it's like, I need I need to be more concerned about being a great player than than looking like a great player. And and that's what and I mean that as a compliment, not in any way uh, condescending at all. Because we've all been through that. Like I was a freshman in college, I started my freshman year in college, and I hit the middle of the lineup. My sophomore year, I thought I was like the greatest thing that ever happened. And our second baseman busted my chops in the middle of a game, and I stopped doing that. And, and so we all go through that. And so I'm really proud of Justin. But Justin's getting on time. He's created an identity for himself where he's going to hit the ball head high. He's going to be on time. He's going to hit the ball head high to the middle of the field, and he's going to bunt. He's going to advance runners, which he didn't do tonight, but he will. He's done a good job of that. And he's committed. He's committed to competing and in, in really to his identity. And and and, and I want to say this, that's hard sometimes in this lineup. It's hard to have your own identity, which is not driving the ball to the ballpark, because there are so many guys that can do that. You know, Dunham and Lloyd and Gorski and and, and Richardson sometimes when he's right can, Barr. and Barr. And so you, you all of a sudden it's like it kind of is contagious. It's like I like that. I like chest bumping and tapping helmets. And but that's not his game. That's not Drew Ashley's game. And so I've been really happy with Justin. Justin's changed our season defensively, and he's really changed our season the last couple of weeks offensively as he's really committed to an identity and done a good job with it. And the great thing for him is he's just scratching the surface. I told him that tonight. I busted his chops pretty hard tonight after one of his at-bats, and it's because the, the, his talent and when he's focused, his, his, his game is, is so high. I don't think he knows how high it is, how, what he can do. He's, he can be transcendent for us. And what he, how he can impact this team is, is incredible. And I don't even know that he knows it yet. And he's been a great, great, great player for us the last few weeks. So he, he's got more to go. He's just scratching the surface. He's going to be a really good ball player. I'm proud of him. Got you on the board tonight. That's right. Big one. Big one. Big one. Thanks for staying, Thanks, guys. guys. Thank, yeah, you. Thank you. Have a good night.